Welcome back to a new video. Today I will be making a Harley Quinn doll. So from a previous video you would have seen that I thrifted this Apple White doll. I figure that she's going to be a really good match to make a Harley Quinn doll. It seems like almost everybody else also uses Apple White to make Harley Quinn dolls. When I thrifted her, she was in pretty good condition. She was just missing a couple accessories. I won't be using any of them, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to get rid of all of them now. I'm gonna start off with her hair because that's probably more difficult to do. Um, I tried to do the fabric dye method and I even used the synthetic dye and you can tell that it did not turn out at all. So I'm showing you that the dye did not work. So what I ended up doing was using the, I guess, watered down acrylic paint method. I used a hot pink and a cerulean blue, and I also put in, I think, a turquoise and a darker blue food coloring to get it to the color that I wanted. And also you want to make sure that you want to make it a little bit darker than how you actually want it to be. Also, sorry if my voice is a little scratchy, it is winter, I've been sick on and off, so this is just what I sound like for right now. I'm going to take the acrylic paint mixtures and start to dye her hair and kind of give a ombre effect. Take your time doing this because the paint it will be very hard to take off if you accidentally put the paint where you don't want it, so just take your time. I repeated the exact same steps with the pink side as well. Also, if you want to be smart, you could wear gloves. Once the acrylic paint was completely dried, I gave her a couple of boiling water rinses to get the stiffness of the paint out of the hair. So a lot of the color did wash out, but the texture of the hair remained. So it was still curly and it was still malleable, it wasn't crunchy. So I'm pretty satisfied with her hair, so I'm going to get started on her dress. These are just a couple of the materials that I wanted to use. I did not end up using all of them, and you'll see why. So because the fabric for the dress was going to be very sheer, I wanted to try and make a pair of panties, but uh, they didn't turn out, so I didn't actually end up using them. And I don't know, I think my pattern also just sucked. So for the dress, I was super lucky, and I found this, like, basically miniature version of her dress pattern at Fabricland. It was on discount as well. I was super lucky. I wanted to minimize the amount of sewing that was going to be required for this dress just because it is so thin. So I took the entire triangle shape and kind of sewed it all towards the back of the dress. Also at this point I realized that the panties were not going to work so I ended up just painting her panty area with black paint. This sounds so weird. When I was at Fabricland, I also found this very mini sequin trim and I'm going to be using that for the straps. I did just two straps just to make it simple. I found this gold trim at a local jewelry store and I'm going to be using that for the fringe for the bottom of the dress. Because the gold chain and the dress are more of a synthetic material, the more kind of plasticky, I can kind of get away with just using hot glue and relying on the heat of the glue to kind of meld the pieces together. Also, don't do what I'm doing and just pressing into the hot glue with your bare finger. Um, I just do it because it doesn't hurt me anymore usually, which means I have done it too much. When I started working on this doll, I kind of realized that the seams of the body parts were kind of shitty. They had a lot of extra plastic where the pieces were met, so I took my X-Acto knife and I kind of just trimmed all of the excess plastic off of her limbs. She also had a couple numbers and letters stamped on her, so I cut that off as well. 
This wasn't super necessary, but because she was going to have body tattoos, I didn't want to have the seams showing. So for her earrings, I couldn't actually really tell what they were in the movie, so I just opted to make hoops and I made one slightly different. And these were from actually a pair of earrings that I bought when I was in Vegas and I was drunk and I hated trying to put these in, so I'm just going to use those earrings for this. So I just took those hoops and I shoved them into her ear holes. I also used a contact cement to make sure that they don't fall out. Also, I actually switched sides of the earrings later on in the video. For her neck jewelry, I'm just going to make two simple pieces. One will just be a gold chain choker and then the other one is going to be a necklace featuring this little diamond piece. I actually don't know where this is from, I just had it laying around. I also have this thicker gold chain and I'm going to make a couple of bracelets and anklets as well. For her shoes, I'm going to be using these Draculaura shoes. I actually don't know what doll style it's from, but they are Draculaura shoes and I'm going to be painting them just plain black. Let's get started on the face up. Using 100% acetone, I'm going to be removing her factory paint. I cleaned up her face and then I prepped her face with Liquitex Matte Medium. Because her complexion is so pale, I also kind of did like a really dirty brushing of just white acrylic paint. And then using my Derwent watercolor pencils, I'm going to do the baselines of what I want her face to look like. Her eyebrows are so stupid in the movie. It's like they were bleached, but then also dyed darker, but then she also has like dark makeup on her eyebrows. Just look at her eyebrows, they look really dumb. I don't hate her eyebrows, I'm just saying that they were difficult to do. For her eyes, I kind of wanted them to be off to the side, like she's just kind of sneering at you, so I made her eyes go towards the side. That was redundant. And here I'm using my Prisma chalk pastels, and I'm just going to use these to color her face a bit, and these are the ones that I found at Goodwill for $1.50. I'm using my black watercolor pencil to make the rotten tattoo towards her side. Now in promotional pictures, the placement of the tattoo changes all the time, which is kind of frustrating. I did it more towards the side so that when you look at the doll face on, the tattoo actually doesn't show, because then it would be weird because the end would kind of show up. So I like the placement of where I put this. It's more towards the side. So I actually had a lot of difficulty doing her eyeshadow because it's the first time that I've done dark makeup on a doll. So I kind of veered towards making, I don't know how to say it, but I guess drag type makeup where it was very highlighted and very dark at the same time. I also decided to give her some red bottoms on her shoes. I would never actually buy Louboutins in real life because they're the most impractical shoe. They're actually made purely for aesthetics, not for actually wearing them. And I also decided not to go with the gold detailing that's on the actual shoe in the movie. It's just because the shoe type that I chose wouldn't really, it wouldn't really work with gold detailing on the front. And now I'm using a very small liner slash detail brush to make her arm tattoo. And I am using a natural bristle brush, so it is going to make it a lot easier to make the lines. I also just painted on the J tattoo. I didn't do it the exact same because I feel like the one in the movie kind of looks like penis. And here I am struggling with her eyebrows. I don't like her eyebrows. I don't like her eyebrows.
I used the same hot pink and cerulean blue paint that I did for her hair and I used that for her eyeshadow as well. For her eye color, it was actually kind of like a navy color for her eyes. Um, I had a little bit of difficulty finding her eye color to not kind of clash with the eyeshadow as well. For her red lips, it was a mixture of like a brilliant red and a dark crimson color. Synthetic hair brushes tend to not hold the paint as well as natural bristle brushes. So if you use a watered down acrylic paint with a natural bristle brush, you're probably going to be able to make fine lines a lot easier. So here I am darkening her eyebrows. If you look in promotional photos, it kind of looks like she used like a dark black shadow to line her eyebrows, which is why it's kind of weird. She actually also has like an eyebrow scar, so I'm putting that in. It's not always super prominent in the movie though, but I'm putting it in anyways because it looks super cool. Here I am lining her eyes, and I actually did do eyelashes all throughout the eyes. I actually ended up painting over it because I felt like it made her look too doe-eyed, so the eyelashes that are on the eyelids, they will not be there later. For the pupils, I usually end up using a toothpick or a dotting tool, just because it's easier than going in with a paintbrush. I also did the same thing with the eye shines, the anime eye shines. <laughs> I think I ended up not filming me doing the painting of the rotten tattoo just because I needed to be really close to it and it, it would just be like my face, so I didn't do that. When I prepped her face, I also actually prepped her chest so that I could quickly paint the daddy's little monster tattoo. For her nails, I also decided to do alternating dark red and black. My memory card was a little bit full at this point, so I did a couple things off camera. I added more trim for the fringe, and I also extended her tattoo a little bit. I also fixed up her eye makeup a little bit to make her a little bit more sultry looking. This is the first time that I decided to put eyelashes on a doll. I had these individual eyelashes that I got when I was in Japan at Daiso, I think, for like two dollars. And I'm gonna be using this and you can try using the Fabric Fusion. I actually ended up using a contact cement instead. And here you can get a better look at the rotten tattoo. I think it actually came out pretty good. And right here, I am just trying to adhere the individual lashes. I ended up using with the contact cement just because it adhered a little bit quicker than the fabric fusion did. You can use whichever. You can even maybe get away with using super glue. I just found that the contact cement allowed enough time to adhere, but also enough time to maneuver. I trimmed her lashes a little bit and then sealed her face with Liquitex sealer and then I am done. So here is the completed doll, completely different style than the Princess Sailor Moon one that I did in the video before. I had a lot of fun working on the Harley Quinn doll, I think mostly because I didn't have to deal with the hair as much. I didn't want to do a reroute this time, so I'm really happy with how she turned out. With the Harley Quinn doll, I had a whole bunch of things that I tried for the first time, like dyeing the hair, eyelashes, tattoos, just a whole bunch of things that I haven't tried before, so I had a lot of fun with her. This Harley Quinn doll is available for purchase, so if you are interested in her, please message me in all of my message things. Email, preferably. I know that Suicide Squad wasn't everybody's cup of tea, and I know that a lot of people didn't like the new Harley Quinn, but I actually really like the new design, 
and I especially liked the gold dress scene where this whole doll is inspired from and I didn't really want to do her standard outfit, I wanted to do a more glam Harley Quinn so I decided to go with this and I really really like how she came out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. For her eyeshadow I actually use the same color that for her eyeshadow I actually use the same acrylic <laughs> For her eyeshadow I actually use the oh, why